Hello, Jamalov here and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Dwarf Fortress, a tutorial series where I'm building an example fortress showing how to build a fortress, how to help the dwarves survive. It is now late autumn, 5th of timber. It is about two weeks, two or three weeks before the trade caravan from the Dwarven, uh, Dwarven Fortress or the Dwarven Mountain Homes uh, arrives. And uh, this video will be whatever I have time for before the caravan arrives. And then in the next one I'll be taking care of the trading and also the negotiations that uh, I can do with uh, liaison or the diplomat that comes with the Dwarven caravan. And uh, last time I queued up a building of Quern and I uh, prioritized that to the max. When that is done, we'll be doing some milling, uh, doing uh, processing dwarven wheat into dwarven wheat flour, and quern is the, is the tool that I will need to build so that dwarves can do that manually. It can also be done with millstone, which needs machine power that uh, I'll be covering later. Also, I'll uh, furnish my uh, my bedrooms with whatever I have, putting some uh, some containers into the rooms that don't yet have one. I actually already queued them up last time, just placing those that I hadn't yet. And uh, I'll make sure that uh, I had made bedrooms out of all these. I hadn't, so I will do that. And um, as before, the dwarves will come and claim them on their own. I'm not assigning these to anyone, even that I could. Uh, it is sometimes good idea. Well, it is good idea if if you want to make the bedrooms closer, close to the whatever the dwarves are working for. For example, uh, here in my uh, well, this isn't that far away. It's a couple of a couple of levels down. But uh, to make sure that, uh, for example, the mason and mechanic have uh, their sleeping facilities right next to the workshops, that'll keep the dwarves busy in their workshops more because they don't have to travel that far uh, to sleep. But here, with this central staircase design, it's uh, it doesn't matter that much. Right, let me uh, unpause the game and uh, see what else I need to do. I do need to queue up the stone crafts again. If you watched the previous previous uh, video, you uh, saw that uh, we created, uh, or Dwarf created, and again putting these on repeat, my uh, stone crafter created under a strange mood an artifact obsidian amulet and uh, when the dwarf claims claims the workshop all uh, all uh, assignments in that workshop are cancelled and uh, because I hadn't I had placed these here manually not through the manager I need to come here and uh, put these orders here again if uh, so if the Dwarf would have claimed Mason's workshop, which has most of its orders from the manager. The manager would have uh, assigned those uh, there uh, afterwards. So that that would have been uh, would have been fine. I have some mechanisms on the way, yes, and I do want some traps here, and I do want some emergency traps here in my safe trade depot. Um, let's put those in place, at least a couple of stone traps here. And um, yeah, one, uh, one other thing is that uh, my I now have three miners but I forgot to create that one, one big. So let's build a workshop and metalsmith's forge, so I can create create a um, a 
pick for my miner. And for that, let's assign here smelting of all to magnetite ores. Let's put that on repeat. And while at it, let's uh, let's smelt a couple of galenas as well. I didn't mention this in the previous previous ones, but um, smelting of ores has changed uh, lately in this in this version or in the recent version. You uh, you get more you get more ore or more metal bars from uh, each ore. But on the other hand, the ore ore and uh, and stone are uh, a bit rarer, if you will. You get about every every fourth square uh, or or stone and then that is reflected by getting a uh, getting multiple bars so Terra from, uh, from the single single uh, iron ore I got uh, I got four iron bars so I will actually use one of those into uh, into creating an iron pick when that is done That is done. I will also uh, also turn one of those magnetites into big iron, creating steel. Just one, not on repeat. And uh, as soon as that forge is done, I will. I think my weaponsmith is one of the miners. Am I right? Am I right? Ah, he's the one on the break. Yeah. So the, that'll be... Wait a moment. Okay. When I said I don't have a pick... That ain't so. There is one iron pick. I believe the miner, miner who came from the migrant wave, actually had that pick with him. Okay, so I don't need to, don't need to create anything now. But if I would have wanted to make, I would have made, made it in the metalsmith's forge into weapons, choose iron and create iron pick or whatever material. And uh, this always requires some sort of fuel. It either, either needs uh, charcoal or coke and uh, or a magma forge. And same thing with the smelting. This always requires fuel for the smelting and uh, then uh, making making steel also requires uh, additional fuel into into making that steel. But uh, yeah, so I don't need to create big. Nice. Um, the quern is not done because the mason had other things queued up. Time goes fast. It is fourteenth of timber. Getting some cancellations that I need bags. Let's see, are these bags full? Ah, yeah, these are all gypsum, gypsum blaster. Um, how about I make some more bags? Do I have clothes? Yes, I do. Let's go to the unit list manager, queue up bag, clothes. Let's make six. So, right now, uh, plant processor is uh, processing plants into bags, and that order processes quarry bushes into quarry bush leaves. I'll probably have some here. Yeah. And um, those can be used in used in cooking. The as soon as I get my uh, get my 
quern done, I can uh, I can build it. Uh, milling dwarven wheat into dwarven wheat flour, and also what I've done already, creating dwarven syrup from the sweet pods. These are uh, completely viable trade goods if you produce large amounts of these. Not only they will keep your dwarves fed because they can be used as ingredient ingredients in cooking. These are relatively valuable as well, so uh, you'll be able to trade dwarven syrup barrels and uh, and dwarven wheat flour. You won't be able to trade those with uh, with elves, I think, because uh, because of the wooden barrels. But uh, okay, I'm not entirely sure if those can be can be put into those stone pots. Well, anyway. Uh, the point was that uh, the flour and the s and uh, dwarven syrup are good trade goods, so uh, you don't even need to do any stone crafts or any any other stuff for trading. You can do it all through farming. And with this, uh, the example embark I used with uh, two farmers, uh, you can easily easily do that from the start if you want. Okay, moving on, and my miners are are not doing anything. Uh, I will uh, go look for ore, iron ore, and uh, well, any metal ore, but mainly iron. And I will do that in the southeast corner or the bottom right, because when I embarked, I remember that. Uh, that the biome on the bottom right or southeast was the biome that had shallow metals, as um, as in multiples. So I will uh, go here, um, say there, and let's uh, dig down from here. I will create a kind of a mining base here, and then I will widen this area at some moment, and let's go one level down, mine here as well, and then uh, since we are not under any lakes here, in here I will uh, do this kind of exploration. Then I will expand these. Uh, okay, that's the bottom, bottom of this uh, of this map, and from from here I will expand into uh, into the sides and uh, creating kind of a grid, and from there I will dig down, looking for looking for more ore. Uh, when I when I start digging down like this, I want to uh, want to Take it away from the away from the fortress, because there are things I can uh, I can dig into when I uh, when I go down, and there's the quern done. There are things I can uh, get into when I dig down, uh, namely caverns and uh, a bit deeper, something worse, but uh, something I won't even even tell about in this tutorial. Uh, if if needed, I can wall this off, or I can create defenses here uh, for anything that might come out from the from the from the mines. So that's why I always create it here. I am very I'm very careful digging down straight from my fortress without knowing what's what what is there. Actually, this is what I've done here. Uh, Level nine down is uh, pretty much the max I usually do from the fortress, and even in these uh, in these depths, you can run into the caverns, which uh, which are quite quite interesting. But uh, more about than those when I run into some. Okay, build workshop, and I will build a quern, and this is only a like a single tile, so I will put it here right next to. Uh, the barrels and also the plants. So let's make it there, and then I can assign some things to be milled. When that is done, I will see how many plants I have. I have plenty of cave wheat, 
uh, which will turn into dwarven beer, the sweet spots into a dwarven rum, pigtails into dwarven ale, and as I think I mentioned before, it is good to provide the dwarves with some uh, some versatility in the alcohol. They will drink the the dwarven wine from the plump helmet, plump helmet just fine, but uh, they will. Uh, eventually get uh, gets bored of it and uh, they might go as far as starting to drink water because they are so uh, so fed up drinking just wine so uh, let's uh, queue a new order mill plants and I will mill uh, let's make the order five and then I will start making some uh, making some uh, beer out of it I will also uh, also uh, control the number of the turkeys a bit I uh, didn't do this uh, didn't do this before so with T I can see uh, what which of these uh, ones actually have X and I will uh, forbid these X with F that means that no dwarf will ever touch these and I think 25 is plenty yeah 25 is good I uh, earlier had just disabled X from this stockpile, but I actually want want to control it a bit better. So let's permit X here and actually permit X here as well. I have 25, 25 there, and that's that's good for now. Permit X, and I can also start cooking cooking something soon with those X. The dwarves will go collect all the all the other eggs than those I just uh, assigned, and the caravan has arrived. There are a lot of messages messages there, so it takes a while for it to come up, but they are there. And uh, also, an outpost liaison or diplomat has arrived. Comes with the dwarven caravan. With this diplomat, my leader. Currently, the expedition leader uh, needs to have a meeting, and that uh, means that uh, he should be as unbusy as possible so that the meeting takes place. In that meeting, I can tell the diplomat uh, what items I'd like them to bring next year, and the diplomat will tell what they'd like us to produce items that they would pay better next year. If this uh, meeting doesn't take place, the diplomat can leave unhappy and uh, that might have some uh, consequences later, so I want that meeting to take place and uh, if needed, I will uh, disable some tasks uh, that uh, I have assigned for the expedition leader. Currently I don't have any. I have no traps in the making, I don't have any mechanisms in the mechanics workshop because the expedition leader is the mechanic. Okay, actually there is. I will suspend these so that uh, so that um, expedition leader is free and I will also uh, suspend it here. Or can I suspend it here? No, that, that's actually that's actually fine. So the expedition leader is is unbusy, so we can have that meeting, and just making sure the way to my trade depot is free. As you remember, I have this bridge open here, so from the surface one level up, the dwarven the caravan can come down with their wagons, come into the trade depots. Once they are there, all of them I can now lock them in, and then open the way from inside into the trade depot. And um, while the depot, while the caravan is here, I can uh, let the game roll for a while, so that uh, caravan gets in and then take care of the take care of the trading next time. So many cancellations now from the. From there, that uh, happens happens because of the 
how the stockpiles work. Each and every cloth is in that one pin. So when one when someone is picking up cloth from the weavery, moving that pin, the whoever works at the, works there at the clothiers is can't find any cloth. So there are some. Uh, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, here's the here's the negotiations. When the when the clothier is looking for cloth, uh, he can't find because they are all in that one bin. So there's kind of a little bit of negative uh, negative thing about the bins. So uh, you might not want to create them that early. Mm. Okay, I guess I will take care of these negotiations here on this video and then trade on the next one. So uh, here is the this actually happens because the the diplomat, the outpost liaison, uh, is now meeting with my leader. They have a my my leader has a job conduct meeting, and uh, here the diplomat greets my uh, my leader. We can look at the unit list. There's a job conduct meeting, and uh, if I zoom, uh, I see that it is taking place in the dining hall. If a leader has has his own office. Uh, if if my expedition leader was still the broker, uh, it might actually take place in the office. But uh, for now, it's it's taking place in here. So here the game is rolling, and after a while, the next next step in this uh, negotiations takes place. This is somewhat irritating at times because you you try to do stuff uh, while at it, and then these pops up uh, without you having any uh, influence in it. Okay, so here. I can tell the diplomats what they should bring next time. And uh, moving with the numbered keys, I can move down in this item and then I can uh, prioritize what they should bring me. And uh, higher the priority and the fewer items you ask, the higher the chance is that they actually bring it. And one item I always ask from the Dwarven caravan is gypsum powder because uh, it is uh, somewhat rare to find it and it is absolutely needed when uh, dwarves start to get hurt and uh, you have your hospital set up which I will show later in this tutorial because with gypsum, pla gypsum plaster is needed when uh, dwarves have uh, broken their uh, limbs, arms or legs so max priority for that and then everything else uh, if I was in a if I was in a map without any trees, I would ask for some wood, uh, because there are several several woods they would bring it anyway. I would ask some uh, some normal trees, not the tower cap logs, which are the common underground trees for the dwarves. They might bring those anyway. So I would just ask something like maple, uh, maybe health priority, or uh, maybe several with health. So they would they would be. Uh, more likely to bring that. And the same thing if, if you have a map without any metals, you might ask for uh, metal bars or if there is any any stones. If you can find some, uh, some metal ores in here, you could ask for those. I won't ask for anything. Or if you don't have flux stone, you could ask for, uh, ask for those. Like, uh, like marble. Marble or chalk, for example. But as mentioned, I, I won't be using anything. And same goes for gold, silver, and things like that. But so I will just uh, take whatever they bring, if they bring. One thing I might want to ask is some animals. Uh, if I want to create specific breeding of animals for uh, for their leather and uh, other goods, I could ask for it here. I will ask for male and female alpaca. Because alpacas can be can be uh, well, of course, butchered for their skin, but you can also uh, also milk and shear them, if I remember correctly. But anyway, the point is that's what I want to do. You might might look for uh, might look for something else here as well. Any, anything you want to want to make sure you get male and female, ask for it here. I will put health priority. It doesn't really matter that much. Well, actually, if I really want them, I will make them max. Okay. Um, okay, those are now maxed. And um, with 
plus and minus, let's move again. So chips and plaster some animals. I don't think I need anything else. I have everything I want now. So I will just ask for those. When I press ESC, the meeting continues. Uh, and we struck hematite. Iron ore. That was faster than I thought. Kimi. All right. Look at that. How about that? Outstanding. It's in silt. That is so strange. Okay, but hematite is iron ore, so my uh, exploration mining, I didn't even need to go down to find it, so I guess the shallow metals was uh, was right. Okay, what is this, uh, what is this stone? This is basalt. Okay. I don't recall seeing metal ore in soft materials before, but maybe I have, I just don't recall. But, important thing, we find iron. But uh, more about that, uh, more about that later on. However, that does mean that I will uh, will expand this uh, so the dwarves can move faster, and I'll be building some mine carts here later on, probably. Although I might do it here on this level. Oh, anyway, back to the meeting. The, um, all all the while the caravan is on the way here. Uh, we can see that the, the, they usually come with some sort of cards. Here they have some spear dwarves and here we have a hammer dwarf in addition to these uh, these uh, merchant guys. They also show in the unit list others. We can see here that there are merchants. Uh, we can also see all the animals they have with them. Which is quite interesting if these buck rabbits are uh, male and female, I could take them. There's also reindeer there. I think I had one reindeer. Also interesting possibility. And then we can see all the merchants, uh, including the guards. And then uh, whatever they have pulling their um, pulling their wagons, we can see them there as well. And um, when the caravan arrives, it's a common place for the goblins to follow them. Just making sure. Oh, that's a radio pool as well. Uh, it's a common thing for the for the goblins or whatever enemies enemies are to follow them, and uh, ambush might take place. And uh, here we can see that uh, some of the traders are already here. These didn't have the wagons. The wagons are slower, and they are making their way in. Okay, the negotiation continues. As said, this is somewhat somewhat uh, annoying how this pops up here and it doesn't take place right away. So if I look over at the documents, here we, can, here we can see the prices that we'll need to pay if and when they bring these things. If I look at the powder, I can see that I need to pay 196% price for the chips and plaster. That doesn't matter, I really want chips and plaster, so I will happily pay that. And when you ask for the things, they are very likely to bring it, if you only ask for a few things. It is possible that uh, the civil dwarven civilization you are in doesn't have those goods, and then uh, they won't bring as many. They might still bring some, but uh, and it is possible that they just don't bring it, they don't have it. But uh, usually... Usually it is uh, good to go, and if I look at the prices of Alpaca, I need to pay 191% and 195%. I think these prices, they are somewhat random, and they are related to the... This is, this is guessing, I haven't really even thought about this before, but uh, they are dependent on the on the negotiation skill of the leader, and uh, prob probably some other skills as well. But uh, those prices usually don't matter that much. You can produce so much value in the, in the fortress that uh, uh, you can just pay, pay whatever the caravan brings. But uh, 
just a just a thought there that that actually that actually matters. Um, I will here uh, place uh, furnish all these rooms. The negotiation still continues. There will be the the last last part where the where the liaison tells us what they want to uh, what they want to get. Do I have some cabinets already? Yes, I do. So the basic basic uh, free free tile bedroom, a bed, a coffer, and a cabinet makes uh, makes the dwarves happy and uh, creates enough value, especially when created from obsidian. Like I was lucky enough to have here, this will be uh, this will be good. There are more cabinets on the way. Yes. Okay, let's let the negotiations continue, and the caravan is making its way here. They will soon all be there. And we actually just had some uh, had some uh, some of the turkeys hatch up from there. I'll wait for that one last guard to get into the depot. Okay, here comes the last part of the negotiations. Still waiting. Okay, pausing the game. I think now everyone everyone is in the depot. Just making sure there are there were four of them. So there are four soldiers. I can see all of them. There's one merchant, there's one merchant. Here are two merchants. I'm pressing V for next. They are here on the same screen. We can see the we can see this one flashing. So they are all here. So that means that I will now lock them in using this uh, my safe safe trade depot pulling that lever and if I go here this bridge has now closed and now this caravan is actually locked in if I if I wouldn't open anything they would uh, eventually starve to death in there uh, or I could uh, use other means to kill them but uh, since it is the dwarven caravan I definitely don't want to do it but say if these were the elves or the humans I might do that if I wanted to pick a war not on the first time they arrive probably but maybe later anyway uh, now I will open my uh, open my uh, indoor bridge and now everything is ready for trading uh, I can bring goods in my in my depot. Okay, but let's uh, continue and hope that the meeting meeting ends. Oh, we have a whole whole lot of those uh, baby baby turkeys. I will uh, take care of that. This is uh, part of why I wanted to limit the number a bit. I still left like 25, I think. But this is this is called the bird bird explosion or chick explosion. If you do it, do this with chickens. Uh, you can you can have a 100 chickens in no time if you don't collect the eggs. But because I forbid those uh, forbid those some eggs, those were collected and then the rest was uh, taken into into the stockpile. Keeping an eye on my foods and drinks. I have plenty, and I have some plenty, plenty of stuff to be uh, be processed. And I think my miller is uh, is working on the yeah, is working on the flower. I would really like the meeting to end now. Oh man, my miss, my bad. <laughs> the expedition leader went into take went to moving those uh, moving those birds. Is he free now? Yeah. Okay. Ah, there it is. Okay. The export agreement. And here it is. This is what this is what uh, dwarves like us to produce and they would pay good price. So here you can see for example toys. 
so I'll be definitely prioritizing making uh, stone toys over, uh, say, stone mugs or instruments. But uh, and I might even uh, save some toys and not trade toys this time. I probably will because I don't have that many. But I could leave toys for the next year, and I would get a very good price for those. And here we can see the other things. I could create some uh, handware, for example, put some, uh, make some gloves with my clothier or, or leather worker. I could create uh, spears from metal. I would get a slightly better price for those. Uh, I'll get a good price for cut gems, which is good, especially if I get a very skilled gem cutter. But yeah, definitely the best price is for the toys. So I will focus my uh, crafting into that. And that ends the meeting. There's still the one last point here. So uh, I look forward to our meeting next year, our fortunes rise and fall together. And that ends the meeting. And now the expedition leader is free. So next time I'll be able to trade because my expedition leader is also the broker. So uh, next time trading. Uh, yeah, and uh, whatever, whatever follows. So uh, thanks for watching this one. This is kind of an extra episode with that negotiation and some minor, minor things there in between. And um, yeah, join me on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.